Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If you're diving into cross-platform app development, you've probably come across the big question. Which framework should you use? There are tons of options out there, but today we're zooming in on four heavy hitters, Tori, Flutter, Electron, and Neutralino. I've been tinkering with these tools for a while now, building apps, testing performance, and wrestling with their quirks. And let me tell you, each one has its own flavor. Some are lightweight and snappy, others are feature-packed but heavy, and some strike a unique balance. So I'm here to break it all down for you, share my experiences, and help you figure out which one might be the best for your next project. Cross-platform development is a game changer. It lets you write one code base and deploy it across Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and sometimes even mobile or web. But choosing the right framework isn't just about picking the shiniest tool. It's about matching the framework to your project's needs, your team's skills, and your performance skills. Do you want a tiny app size, blazing fast performance, or maybe you just want to stick with what you already know? Each of these frameworks, Tori, Flutter, Electron, and Neutralino, approaches cross-platform development differently, and they all have trade-offs. Over the past year, I've built small desktop apps like a note-taking tool and a file manager using each of these frameworks. I've also ported a couple of web apps to desktop to see how they handle the transition. I've dealt with the headaches of debugging, the joys of quick wins, and the frustration of compatibility issues. So in this video today, I'm going to walk you through what makes each video tick, their strengths and weaknesses, and how they stack up for real-world projects. By the end, I'll share my personal pick and why I think it's the best choice for most developers. Let's dive in. First up, Tori. Tori is a relatively new kit on the block, and it's making waves for being lightweight and secure. It's a framework that lets you build desktop apps using web technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the front end, while the back end is powered by Rust. Unlike some other frameworks, Tori doesn't bundle a full browser like Chromium. Instead, it's using the operating system's native web view like WebView 2 on Windows or WebKit on Mac OS. This keeps app sizes tiny, think 2 to 3 megabytes, compared to the 80 to 100 megabytes you might see elsewhere. I built a simple two-factor authenticator app with Tori and the installer was just 2.5 megabytes and that's insane. Tori's big selling point is performance. Because it leans on Rust and native web views, it's super efficient using less RAM and CPUs than heavier alternatives. It's also got security baked in by default with restricted API access to prevent things like rogue scripts wreaking havoc. You can use any front-end framework, React, Views, Felty, and Tori's project generator makes set up a breeze. I've used Svelte with Tailwind CSS for my app and it felt like building a regular web app just with a native executable at the end. But there's a catch. Tori's reliance on system web views means you might run into compatibility issues. For example, macOS's WebKit can lag behind in Chrome in supporting modern web features, so you'll need to test through across platforms. Also, while you don't need to be a Rust expert, you'll likely need some Rust knowledge for advanced features or custom native integrations. I had to learn a bit of Rust to add a system trait feature and the learning curve was steep but manageable. Tori's ecosystem is also smaller so finding plugins or community support can be trickier than with older frameworks. Still, if you want a lean, secure app and don't mind a bit of rust, Tori's a fantastic choice. Next, let's talk about Flutter. Developed by Google, Flutter's a beast for building high quality, beautiful performance apps across mobile, web, and desktop from a single code base. Unlike the others, Flutter doesn't rely on web technologies. It uses Dart, a language that's easy to pick up in its own rendering engine, Skia, to draw pixel-perfect UI components called widgets. I built a journaling app with Flutter, and the hot reload feature where you can see UI changes instantly was a game-changer for tweaking designs. Flutter's strength is that it's consistent, native-like UI. Those widgets, like those buttons and text fields, are customizable and look great across platforms. And making native web components. Performance is stellar since Flutter compiles to native machine code, avoiding the overhead of web views. My app ran smoothly even with animations and used about half the memory of simple apps on similar platforms that I built. Flutter's also got strong mobile support, so if you're eyeing a desktop to mobile pipeline, it's a solid pick. Big names like Google Ads and Alibaba use Flutter, which shows its real-world chops. The downside? Flutter's app sizes are larger, like my journaling app, which was around 20 megabytes, which isn't huge, but bigger than Tori or Neutralino. Dart's ecosystem outside Flutter is limited, so you you might struggle to find libraries for niche tasks. Also, while Flutter's desktop support is improving, it's not as mature as its mobile support. I hit a snag trying to access some Windows-specific APIs, which required writing platform-specific Dart code, slowing me down by quite a bit. The community is growing fast, but it's still behind some older frameworks in terms of third-party plugins. If you want a polished, native-feeling UI and don't mind learning Dart, Flutter can be a powerhouse for you. Now, Electron. 
this is the veteran of the group powering apps like Visual Studio Code, Slack, and Discord. Electron lets you build desktop apps using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, bundling a full Chromium browser and Node.js runtime. If you're a developer, Electron feels like home. I ported a React-based web app to Electron, and it was seamless. Same code base, it just had some Node.js APIs for native features like file access. The huge Node.js ecosystem means you got tons of libraries at your fingertips whenever you wanted them. Electron's strength is in its consistency and ease of use because it bundles Chromium, which makes your app look and behave the same way across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux without ever having to worry about quirky system web views. The community is massive as well, with tons of tutorials, plugins, and tools like Electron Builder for packaging available whenever you need it. My app was up and running in a weekend and adding a SIM tray icon was a breeze with Electron's APIs. Not as much with the others, but Electron's got a reputation for being bloated. My app's installer was like 85 megabytes and it used about a 300 megabytes of RAM at runtime, which is a lot, lot more than Tori or Neutralino. And this is because every Electron app carries its own Chromium instance, which eats away at your resources fast. Security is another concern. While Electron's improved at sandboxing, its open Node.js APIs can be extremely risky if not locked down properly. I also noticed slower startup times compared to native apps, which could annoy users on lower end machines. If you prioritize developer speed, a massive ecosystem, and consistent rendering, Electron's your go-to, but you'll pay for it with size, performance, and sometimes your security. Finally, we have Neutralino. This is the underdog, a lightweight framework like Tori, skips bundling a browser, and uses the OS's native web view. Neutralino lets you build across platform desktop apps with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and it's designed to be as minimal as possible. I built a simple file explorer with Neutralino, and the binary was under 3 megabytes. Super impressive. It uses a WebSocket-based API for native operations like file handling, which felt straightforward. Neutralino's biggest win is its simplicity and size. It doesn't require Node.js or the heavy dependencies, so setup is quick and apps are portable. You can extend it with any language via WebSocket extensions, which is cool if you want to mix it in, say Go or Python for backend logic. Neutralino's also got a small but passionate community, and its CLI makes creating and building apps a snap. The trade-offs? Neutralino's ecosystem is a bit tiny compared to Electron or even Tori. I struggle to find plugins for advanced features, and documentation can be spotty. Like Tori, it uses system web views, so you'll face the same compatibility headaches. My app had CSS issues on macOS due to WebKit's quirks. Security is decent, but not as robust as Tori's, and there's no built-in updater, so you'll need to roll your own. Neutralino is great for small, simple projects, but it's not ready for complex apps like VS Code. If you want a lightweight framework and don't need a huge ecosystem, Neutralino is worth a look. All right, guys, time to wrap it up and share my pick. After building with apps like Tori, Flutter, Electron, and Neutralino, my choice for most projects is Tori. Why? It strikes the best balance of performance, size, and flexibility for desktop apps. Tori's tiny binaries, often under 3 megabytes, make distribution a breeze, and its low memory usage keeps apps snappy, even on older machines. I love that it uses web technology so I can leverage my JavaScript skills, but the Rust backend adds a layer of speed and security that's hard to beat. My Authenticator app with Tori was a joy to build, and users loved how lightweight it felt compared to Electron-based alternatives. Tori's not perfect. Rust's learning curve and web view quirks can be annoying, but its roadmap like mobile support with Tori 2.0 shows its future proof. But its roadmap like mobile support with Tori 2.0 shows its future proof. For most developers, especially those prioritizing performance and security, Tori's the sweet spot. Give it a try for your next project, guys, and let me know in the comments how it goes. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed and were able to take away something that can help you choose which one you want to use. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.